We are good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, never listen to Bellman! Give me a hell yeah! Woo! Yeah. 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 You guys are frozen on my end. We're frozen? Oh, there, you're unfrozen. You just unfroze. Excellent. Frozen. How are we doing? How are we doing? Thank you all. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. It is my sorry, pleasure. We're gonna try to, we're gonna try our best to pass this around. <laughs> okay, no, that's all good. How about we start off with with introductions? Everybody, introduce yourself. Let us know what you do in the band. Let me know whereabouts you're you're kicking it right now, and uh, plug or promote anything you'd like. What up? Uh, my name is Casey. I sing in Neverless. Uh, I'm Jordy. I also sing in Neverless. Uh, I'm Garrett. I play bass. Um, we're pretty much exclusively we are neverless on most platforms. So um, if you can't find us um, at we are neverless, it's probably just N V R L E S S. Gotcha. How long has the band actually been together for? Like four, four and a half years. We like we've been a group for like four and a half years, but I think we just like recently, like within the last year and a half, have been putting out music pretty like seriously. Yeah, originally it started with uh, Garrett and I were in a, a project originally, and then Casey and I had met and then started making music together, and it kind of came to all three of us, and then over time it kind of just evolved into all five of us. We actually stole uh, our drummer from another band in town too, so we had to kind of poach a little bit, but we, we all made it work. And then the, the pandemic definitely didn't help the release schedule for stuff, so we got a little extra time like to cook, which is actually uh, like really helpful, yeah. I think. So how does the poaching work? So you you just were like, dude, you killed you killed the set. Do you mind if I make you quit this band and join my band instead? How does that work? <laughs> a little bit. It was, it, it was it was it was more like it was more like, hey, you're really handsome. And he was like, oh, cool. I was like, you want to be in a band? He's like, yeah. <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> so I'm actually I'm actually still in the other band. Um, I kind of just do both, but uh. Yeah, I mean, I've been friends with these guys since before I joined, and uh, one day I was just like, yeah, you know, like, I can make it work, and I've been here for a little over a year now. Hell yeah. So it's, it's been fun. I know, I know Lizzie was working really hard on setting this one up. I know she has a ton of questions for you guys, so I'm going to pitch it over to her just for a second. Um. Yeah, hi. I was going to ask, <laughs> I was gonna ask, first of all, Corey, you're from Echoes then, right? I've yes. heard a lot about Echoes. Okay, yes. they're amazing too. So that's awesome. Oh, <laughs> um, I guess my first actual question would be: um, the Emergence EP is how much of a difference in the song material and the writing process is there between Emergence and Affliction? Good question. Oh man, uh, that's a really good question. That is a really good question. Um, <laughs> Wow. Um, I think that the probably the biggest difference is that we started writing Affliction, like not really planning for an album of any sort. It just kind of we started with Alone Tonight and it was like, damn, this is a vibe. Uh, and we kind of just started building songs off of that general vibe that we were looking for um, that we felt like we hadn't really gotten to tell in our uh musical story at that time so um everything off of affliction kind of has like a a similar like more matured sounding vibe than emergence in my opinion uh it's definitely a lot more pop infused and i think a lot of people are really digging that it's it's more uh it's more diverse than emergence but uh we've definitely gotten better as producers since emergence to affliction so did you produce uh, affliction yourself we sure did. Wow. It sounds incredible. You guys did amazing. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> job. So for real. Uh, what are what are some goals? Now that Affliction's out, what are some goals, personal goals that you guys have for, for 2023? I imagine playing a lot of shows, 
maybe uh, some more videos. I don't know. But what do you have planned for us? In the wise words of Riff Raff, uh, our main goal is to blow up, then act like we don't know nobody. I love that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He does the chomp. Um, yeah, he does the chomp thing in that video. <laughs> yeah, you got the. I, 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 I seen it. Yeah, no, um, it's definitely playing shows. Um, last year we played um, actually our first set of live shows ever um, on tour with Escape the Fate, which was fucking sick um, wait 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 wait, I think wait, we can wait, all, wait 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 we you're, can all say yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your <laughs> first live it. show ever is opening for escape the fate it was insane it was in, yes. it was an insane <laughs> we were like oh let's do this and they're like yeah because so we want to we want a contest on twitch with dw presents who puts on a lot of the festivals and whatnot and it was like a giant battle of the bands thing on tour uh one of the banter things we did was like oh it was metal american idol and that's pretty much what it was so we ended up getting onto that. Um, we came across them one day on like Facebook, and we were like, "Oh, okay, like let's check this out." And then the guys were really cool. Uh, big shout out to the guys at DW Presents. Really helped us like yes. find that confidence too to get there. And then we we learned as a band that we could all come together and make something happen like when we wanted to, uh, which was which was definitely like growth for all of us. Like In the matter confidence of, like, a month. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was so fast. <laughs> we were like, okay, well we need a ride to go across the country. So yeah, our first set of shows we played. I think seven dates in California or six dates in California. And then we had one in Vegas and then we had to go all the way to Florida for the welcome to Rockville festival, which was like our eighth show ever, which was bonkers. It was crazy. Yeah, saying like do thousands. <laughs> yeah. I accidentally took my shirt off in front of, uh, uh, oh, Lacey awesome. Sturm, Lacey Sturm, uh, it was inside of our RV and the windows were open yeah. and Lacey Sturm was on the outside and I was he like, was oh no, like, uh, <laughs> was like panic. Just, uh, I was like, yeah, so I just ruined my life just now from a childhood idol of mine. So. <laughs> that is, that <laughs> like, is wild. That is so wild yeah. that you, you all didn't have to go through the ringer of five people in the audience, 20 people in the audience. You went straight to like 400 people in the audience. Then eight shows later, 3,000 plus in the audience. That's just crazy. This, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It, it, was, it was a crazy, it was definitely a crazy jump. Um, one, of, one of my biggest things personally that, that I've always kind of held is, is it, we, we wanted to not necessarily skip steps, but we wanted to make sure that when we came out, we came out with like a bang because we all – we, we let our music simmer. We didn't release things too early. We made sure we were like, okay, we all, we all wanted to grow as musicians and grow as individuals first before we really got to putting ourselves out there because we wanted it to be the best version of ourselves at the time. And then I think that, that going back to the emergence question, I think that's one of the things is we all grew immensely as musicians over the last couple of years um, up to even tracking and writing and recording the album So for Affliction. So that was another big, big step was just growth as humans, <laughs> which is like what life yeah. is about. So it was really cool. And then it was like, as we did that, we also, our first shows were, were these, I mean, unbelievably fun and just a really big hell of a ride. It was great. So we're really looking forward to hopefully getting on another tour. Maybe this year is, is pushing another it. Cause couple of tours a couple, couple of tours would be sick. <laughs> it's early. We're rooting for you. Festivals. Yeah. Um, and then we applied for Blue Ridge Rock. So Blue Ridge Rock festivals. So that'll be hopefully, Hopefully something we could get on. Yeah, because be cool. the lineup for this year is fucking it's, massive. massive. It's so, the best wait, lineup of any festival I've looked at so far. The, yeah, the best yeah, lineup. Okay. Uh, before we jam, we jam a track, and I think we're going to go with uh, Watch Me Bleed. We'll play the video. I know Lizzie has another yeah. question or two, and then we'll jump over and play some tunes. Hell yeah. Oh, gosh. I had one at some point. <laughs> I blanked out <laughs> on it. Come back to me. <laughs> okay, we'll come back. She had a brain fart. So let's go ahead and jam uh, Watch Me Bleed. Do you guys want to cue this one up? Uh, maybe discuss what this particular song means to you or what it's about lyrically? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Watch Me Bleed the kind of just came about. Um, I think we can all say, like, in the last couple of years, um, uh, you know, growing as musicians, we also grow as people. We grow in relationships. Relationships come and go. Everybody knows how that goes. Um, this one is just about um, giving your all to somebody who maybe didn't deserve it or maybe it was wrong, right place, wrong time kind of thing. Um, so uh, hopefully hopefully you can't relate, but I'm, I'm sure you can. Um, uh, it's just about falling out of a relationship, so... It's one of those opposite of love songs. You yeah, know? <laughs> I got you. The tailhead. Don't don't drink and drive, kind of thing. Yes, that is a good point right there. Don't do that. 
We're hanging out with Nervalis. If you guys enjoy the song and you're watching, please throw them a YouTube sub. Hit that sub. You know what? I'm gonna hit that bell right there so I don't miss nothing. I have a two part question. Uh, w- sure. When you when you when you guys are working on on the vocals, do you do you trade off melodies? Like I think I should do this here. Do you separately record and and be like, this is what I did. What do you think? How how do you go about balancing having two vocalists? Uh, that is a really good question, actually. So, particularly like when writing melodies, I write a lot of like the melodies, um, and a lot of the time, George. Jordy is there, like, with me. Um, but a lot of the time it's just like, hey, let's track this real quick and see how this sounds. Um, and particularly, like, one song on the album um, that was going to be completely reversed was I'm Not Listening. Um, I was going to do the chorus, and I was like, God, this is not bang the way I want it to. I feel like your voice is so much better for this. So sometimes we'll just trade off. Like, I have a melody idea, Um and, you know, sometimes I think it just takes, like, each like uh, each other pushing in the right direction of, like, no, nah, I think you would I think you would kill that, like, over me. And, you know, so it's just a it's a nice, delicate balance. Um, a lot of people do tell us, like, your guys' voices go really well together. And I think it is because everything that I lack, he has and vice versa. I just I think that we have all grounds covered. To, to kind of bounce off that too I think one of the things we do really well we get uh, we kind of vibe vibe out the songs too we're like she'll show me a track they'll show me a track and be like oh this is kind of how I had an idea and we'll kind of you know uh, play around with it and see what we like and then one of the things to kind of to kind of like check back to what they were saying about what they can do and what I can do we've really grown because we both push each other so when I'm like oh yeah I think this is something that would sound good with me but what if like let's try it this way maybe a new technique that kind of thing and so i've grown immensely as a vocalist just by being pushed in the studio and casey's my best friend so i'm more comfortable here than i am anywhere else and so really getting out of my comfort zone and that's really where you grow uh for all of us you know that's that anyone can take that to any any place in life and you grow by being uncomfortable and by putting each other in uncomfortable situations to get better is I feel like how that, how, how we've all kind of gotten to the point where we're like, okay, this kind of fits here. And this kind of fits there. It's funny because when we originally started, um, a lot of people were like, well, how are you going to do two vocalists? You know, cause usually it's all oh, one screamer and then someone singing or, 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 or something. Or, and then, and then, uh, and, and it was just cool that we kind of found a balance because uh, like I said, we've just been making music together for so long. So it came really naturally, to be honest. It's never like, a, oh, I want to do this. It's like really, yeah, that sounds awesome. So let's do that. So it's fun. <laughs> before before Lizzie asks her question, did you bring some hot sauce? Oh, uh, oh, Kyle's boy. equipped with the hot sauce. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> what we movie did. or t- I need a minute to look up trivia. What movie or TV show have you seen the most? Or if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. This has uh, been delegated to Kyle. Kyle says The Office, yeah? Yep, I say The Office. Let's go for it. All he uh, does is talk about The Office. I, I've watched The Office. And so Kyle, see, uh, Kyle and I actually live <laughs> together. Um, we're currently at our house right now. Um, and when Kyle moved in... Um, he was unboxing all of his things and I found out that he has about a thousand fucking office themed mugs. <laughs> and I was like, Kyle, I don't, I don't know where you expect us to put all of this. <laughs> and he was like, well, I mean, it's not that many. And I just kept unboxing mug after mug after mug. And it was just all office themed. I'm like, Oh, it's not that many, huh? Um, so I, I, I really don't think you'll be able to stump him. All right. I've um, heard this before. I'm gonna try, but before I do, Lizzie, uh, go ahead and shoot off another question or two. <laughs> He's feeling the pressure a little bit now. No pressure at all. It's good. Um, so I was looking at the credits at the beginning of this video, and Casey, I see that your name is on there like three or four times for the direction, the post production, <laughs> stuff like that. I swear I'm not that full of myself. Um, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, um, yeah. Have so you, like. like Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to say, like, being a, we're very much like a DIY band. Like, we do everything ourselves. We, 
um you know like i'm sure a lot of bands that you guys have had on here before can relate like being in a band is unless you're a signed band even still like it is extremely expensive to do yeah. you know things, things at a level of like high quality production so um when we all met each other i think we all kind of agreed like we will do everything that we can to provide the best quality that we can for music videos, music production, writing, everything. Obviously you want to put your best foot forward, but um, we want to provide the best quality and for as low budget as possible. Um, yeah. Huge shout out to our videographer and photographer, Gabe. Um, he's been working with us since the very start and none of those, like none of the videos that we have put out would even be possible without his help. So shout out to Gabe. Uh, if you're watching Gabe, we love you. What's um, up Gabe? Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so like, um, I do like all of the, um, video editing and stuff. Um, and with, you know, with Gabe's help, um, a lot of the time he's like, just give me a, the idea that you're going for. I think as like a, as a creative myself, like not just musically, but I do like graphic design and everything. I always have like my wheels turning in a certain way. So Gabe's like, just tell me what you want shot. Let's do it. And then download the footage and fuck with it how you want. I've so. noticed, I've noticed that in, in a lot of your music videos, you both have different hair colors. Is there a particular reason <laughs> that you choose a certain color per video? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, I'm looking into it too far. Not. Uh, <laughs> I wish there was a deeper reason. <laughs> I wish there was a deeper reason, but honestly, I think we just get bored. Of That's our cool. Hair. No worries. Right now, I'm doing the black and white. So, well, let's. Uh, uh, Jordy's also blonde. So. Let's see if we can get you guys to do a little little hot sauce. <laughs> Lizzie, did, did you want to finish that question that you had? Uh, yeah, if you want to finish that question. Oh I'll... yeah. Um, the question part of it was if you actually have gone to school for like video production or anything like that, or did you teach yourself? Um, I did not go to school for any of that. I've actually, I, I did graduate high school, but, uh, pretty much I've, I know a lot of people like this who are, um, who pretty much rely on YouTube. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I think, I think uh, YouTube can be an extremely helpful tip and depending on how bad you want to learn how to do something, you have unlimited resources out there to, um, you know, to get as good as you allow yourself to get. Um, so just practice makes perfect. A lot of, a lot of people are like, Oh, I can never do that. And I remember thinking like when I first started this, Oh man, like I'm never going to be able to do that. And now I look at, I look back and I'm like, man, like I do that now. Like, so it all, all I can say is you don't need school for it. I think it would be really cool to do school for that, but, um, anything's possible. Just sky's the limit. Just YouTube, YouTube tutorials, YouTube tutorials. You got it. YouTube yep. tutorials all day long. This all is not day. a sponsored ad. All day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're the, we're the YouTube you. generation. Yeah. The, the first, the first. Trivia question, I think is a little bit of an easy one, but it'll kind of judge how many episodes you've seen of The Office. Uh, oh, come so, so let's give it a try. <laughs> if you get it right away, there's a part two to the question. What is the name of the band that Kevin plays in? Which one? That's, yeah, he may have seen it more than once. All right, name both. <laughs> there was Kevin and the Zits. That's technically not the one I'm looking for, though. How long do I have? Oh, it says uh, the band was originally a Steve Miller tribute band. That's the hint it gives. <laughs> it's one word. Scrantonicity. That is correct. Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> I will have to do the hot sauce, as will Lizzie. <laughs> so I guess I'm gonna be do I'm gonna be taking the hot sauce for everybody else, because everybody else is complaining. You don't have to. We didn't stop you. You're more than welcome to join. Listen, my spice tolerance is ground level. Okay. <laughs> so is mine. Sorry. Woo. Just go. I also for it. I also have to put strawberry syrup. 
<laughs> it landed on strawberry syrup in my beer, so I have to put strawberry syrup in my beer. But um, oh. mm. have you have have you guys ever thought about doing like a like a remix or reimagined version of a song and possibly having like a, a big name feature attached? Yeah, we've 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 uh, kind of spitballed around with. We definitely want to do a feature for sure. Um, we ha- we look up to a lot of the artists currently in the scene and that are currently in the scene anymore. Um, as far as reimagined, I mean, we've ha- I've had some friends that wanted to do you know like electronic remixes and that kind of stuff. Uh, we've also thought about. I guess we can talk about the acoustic uh, uh, EP. I guess you could say we're, we're thinking about making a couple songs acoustic by chance, or 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 you know kind of switching up the vibe a little bit but you want to yeah i mean uh i we've definitely talked about about, i mean since we became a band like the possibility of us doing an acoustic reimagined version of a couple of our songs would be really sick so uh maybe that's something we can work on next um as far as like names that i would love to work with in the future um some of my favorite artists right now. Um, I really would love to work with um, James DeBerg from Thousand Below. I think that's how you say his last name. Um, I really love their music. Noah Sebastian from Bad Omens would be sick to work yeah, with too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, uh, what about you guys? Who would Rory. you like to work with? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably Rory Rodriguez from Dayseeker. He's definitely a big Dayseeker. <laughs> We have, I have a personal vendetta with, with Rory, but we will talk about it another time. Oh, no. Wait, we, hey, you got to spill the tea now. Spill the tea. It's a really short story. So, spill the tea uh, five, we have a we lot of it. different avenues of how we get people on the show. So, I messaged Rory and I was like, hey, we'd love to get you on the show. That same day, a couple of people tagged him on some posts and they were like, you should go on Local Band Smoke Out. Like, two people tagged him. He messaged me back and he was pissed. He's like, you're blowing up my feed, and all these people are telling me I should come on your show. Well, I'm not gonna come on the show. But he was like really weird about it. So what? I don't know why he did that. And I mean, like, we were just trying to. We just want to promote Day Seeker, and I think his band's awesome. He's a great voice, but we just thought that was yeah. like really odd that he did that. But That's shout out, shout out to Rory. Still, we still support him. We still support him. Yeah, still, still great. That's that's an odd interaction. Yeah, kind of. unfortunate, cool. but um, sometimes, sometimes it's how it goes in the scene. You know, it can be stressful. It can be stressful. We'll also, win him over. Like, we'll win him over later another day somehow. You had yeah. a void on. You had a void on your show last night. A void yep. was on yesterday. Benny was on, and then we had uh, Gray Days, which was Chester Bennington's first band. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. wow. Um, and that I, one, that one was a uh, that one was an interesting interview because <laughs> his mic was awful. So it's like really hard to oh, hear no. uh, the Sorry. bass player of Grey Days, but we got some cool Chester stories out of it and stuff. It was fun. That's cool. Right on. Um, <laughs> I first of all, I love Avoid's new record. I think it's so, so good. Sick. So good. It's so, so good. good. Um, I would love to tour with them. So uh, if any of you guys in Avoid are watching this, um, please take Neverless on tour. Like, <laughs> please. Oh yes. my god, that'd be so much fun. <laughs> we'll <dumb>. fucking <laughs> bring that shit live. We bring the party, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. No man. I'm going to I'm going to attempt to stump you one more time and then I'm going to send it over to Lizzie for a couple more questions. But this is your second office trivia and I think this one's harder. This one is definitely harder. All right, Kyle, I'll try to help you. All right. All right. Michael as a kid was on a television show. What was the name of the television show he made an appearance on? I think it's only mentioned in one episode once or twice ever. <laughs> the only hand I can give you is it's two words. I think we got him. <coughs> Come on, Kyle. Kyle's cooking right now. Can I ask questions? Okay. Um, does it have barn in the name? It does not. Nah, I'm stumped, man. We got him. Gotcha, bitch. Got him. <laughs> Enjoy the hot sauce. The answer was Fundle Bundle was the name of the TV show. Fundle Bundle. Fundle Bundle. He said, oh, that, yeah, okay. Oh, oh, oh shoot. <laughs> Bottoms up. Lizzie, what's uh, what's your next question? Nice. <laughs> um, I know that we asked about like a reimagined or acoustic <laughs> version of a bunch of your songs, but what about maybe something more like 
electronic or dubstep or even like a heavier, I guess a heavier redo of some songs with maybe more screaming? Or do you have plans for heavier stuff in the future? We're definitely very jack of all trades just when it comes to writing. We all listen to a very wide variety of music, so I'm 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 a huge like heavy uh, like rhythm like dubstep EDM fan. I'm a big house guy. I love that kind of music. So, um, like I said earlier, I have I have a few friends that produce that kind of music actually here that are that are kind of up and coming artists in this area. So. Um, uh, they had actually reached out a couple years ago and they're like, Hey, you want to send me some stems? We can mess around. So it's definitely, definitely something, um, that could happen for sure. As far as getting, maybe doing some stuff, something heavier or getting like a feature for something that'd be really heavy. Uh, we we're writing a lot of new music too. Uh, it has just a wide range of, of different types of stuff. Um, I feel like, I feel like we got some, some heavy bangers coming out soon. Definitely. And then as far as like reimagining old songs, yeah, there's, there's a chance we could do like, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I've never thought about reimagining a song a little heavier. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so like, uh, that's definitely something what is that? Into. Tyler, what's his name, Lizzie? Tyler, Taylor, Tyler Tate from Hollow Front. Is that Hollow Front? I think it's the band that did like a complete reimagine EP. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. none of the songs sound anything like the original versions, but it's still all the same lyrics that's in the same cool. order. It's just kind of cool to do stuff like that. Let's do some. That is, yeah, that's, a, that's really neat. I never even thought about that. That's actually a really cool. That's yeah. a cool, cool avenue. I didn't think about that. Let's hmm. do. Let's do a couple of fun questions. Kind of just planted a seed. Planted a seed for a tree. Ding. We'll see. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> uh, let's say hypothetically, the perfect label comes along with, an, and now you, you're all DIY, but maybe this particular offer is just so good because it comes with a ten million dollar per band member signing bonus. So you can take care of your family. You can take care of all the gear. All that's out of the way. You got millions left over. What are some catch. cool, fun toys that you're buying for yourself? Oh, gaming PC, like a souped-up <laughs> gaming PC for sure. <laughs> the the with the we're at that like the forty the forty twenty now or forty ninety just dropped. Forty ninety, yeah, yeah. crazy. Oh my definitely God. something wild there. I have a pretty juiced PC now, but <laughs> if I got a $10 million deal, definitely that. Probably a... I would I'm definitely gonna... put a drum studio in my backyard. Yeah. Like, fully equipped. Hell yeah. That's good call. Sick. What about you? Um, I'm getting a garage full of sick cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick, Garrett. going to buy a lot of cars. <laughs> right, like 9 um, million really, left over. I'm really into fashion, so I'd probably just cop a bunch of, like, Crazy clothing brands. Stock that wardrobe. Uh, buy the whole and store. Some, some chains. I'll take one yeah. every day. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle said he's going to buy more office mugs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have enough. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd probably just like buy a bunch of companies and hopefully keep that money growing. You know? My answer sucks now. That's cool. Do I change my answer? <laughs> you should buy a new baby while you're at it. Cool. I'm buying a tour bus and we're going to tour. All over yeah. the all over the world. Oh, yeah. I'm buying a plane and a tour bus. bus. Yeah. We're going we're going everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Great answer. I'll spend all ten million on it. <laughs> uh, Lizzie, we got time for a couple more. What what would be uh, like a serious question you have for them? Serious oh, question. Okay, let's go with the pretty basic. How did you guys get started in music? What was your first sort of experience with? Hey, I want to do this. Yeah. In my life. This is good. Go ahead. Uh, start, start with you. Start with me. Pass it around. Oh, we, all God. Got, we all got a different story. Yeah, everyone's got a different story. Um, I <coughs> was very inspired at a young age from my great uncle. Um, he's an insanely talented guitar player, songwriter, musician. Um, and I watched him play guitar as a kid, and I was like, wow, that would be really sick to do that. Um, And then uh, I was really into sports, and I ended up um, going a little too hard, and um, I was on crutches for like a couple couple weeks. I don't remember exactly how long it was, but I couldn't play, so I just picked up my guitar um, that was kind of just sitting there um, as a present that I had gotten a while back, and I just kind of was fiddling around with it, and I was like, damn, this is actually really fun. So... um, started playing guitar, started singing and people told me, "Hey, you're kind of good at that." And I was like, "Hey, thanks." So then I just kind of <laughs> What was the sport? Eventually... What was the sport that you were good at prior to that? 
Uh, I was really into softball, um, baseball. I mean, I, I played like everything, but, um, I played all kinds of sports. I did volleyball. Um, I was also really into, um, BMX, um, and, uh, motocross. So, oh yeah, cool. Um, yeah. So, um, that was just a cool way to start playing music. I guess you, you get hurt and you do something else. So, uh, <laughs> uh Sure. So for me, it was just like my family was always like playing music. My dad was in bands growing up. And then as me and my brothers kind of got to the age where we could play uh, instruments, we all kind of played songs together. And that was like my family's way of bonding, I guess. Um, And then getting into like high school and stuff, I started playing in a band and I guess the rest is history for me. Cool. Oh, yeah. So mine's kind of similar to Garrett's in the, because my dad actually plays drums as well. Um, and I guess one day I told him I was bored. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to teach you how to play drums. And um, I grew up and he played in our church band. Um, and uh, yeah, from like the time I was 10 years old to now, I've been playing drums ever since. Um, in high school, I was in marching band and drum line. Um, and it's always been something that's I've really been passionate about and I've really loved doing. And yeah, I just I joined a band in high school and then that was Echoes. And um, I met these guys and just been doing it ever since. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I remember I was like eight or nine. Uh, so my, my parents are a pretty big influence, uh, just with like the, the music that they listen to, um, you know, a lot of classic rock and stuff like that. Um, so I was heavily inspired by them. Um, but basically I remember when I was like eight or nine and I was driving with my mom in the car and she was playing Pink Floyd. I think it was another brick in the wall part two and that solo hit. And I was like, I love that sound. Like, that sound is just amazing. And I was like, Mom, like, I would love to have a guitar. Like, I would, I want to sound like this. I want to do that. And then for my next birthday, I think I was 10, um, I got my first guitar. Um, and my grandfather was also a pretty big, big influence. Um, never met him, um, but he was a famous violinist in California um, before he died. And I played the violin for a little bit, but that really didn't do anything for me. But guitar really, really. Can you still play yeah. violin? Jim, my James. No. Okay. You can really play the guitar. Huh? <laughs> It'd be cool to bust it out on stage <laughs> yeah. and just hit a little, a little lick oh, right, real quick. Idea. Dude, I I just saw uh, uh, Black Veil Brides in concert at the the Trinity of Terror tour, and the guitarist I forget his name, but he was he played the electric violin on stage it was actually pretty sick that is cool, cool. that is cool uh what when, while you guys were at e- either rockville or on tour with escape to fate i imagine you got to hang out with with craig a couple of times did he ever did he ever give give advice or anything or did anybody at rockville maybe you met backstage give you advice on on how to just go about growing the band or anything like that as far as growing the band, so I actually got to have a really cool experience. So uh, we we toured with uh, Escape the Fate, uh, Red Jumpsuit Apparatus, which was really great, and um, Max Green, who was originally in Escape the Fate, uh, his new band, Violent New Breed, mm-hmm. uh, and we we became really good friends with those guys. And uh, Max and I were just chatting one time, and I mentioned that I play a lot of video games because I, I used to play competitive like Apex Legends and stuff. So um, I play COD Mobile every day. Cod Mobile. Oh, not <laughs> yeah. You got the, you got the, you got the sniper thumbs on there. I uh, so, so we were. Uh, I got a really cool experience. Max invited me to come play Halo with Craig and Rob on the tour bus, and that was a lot of fun. One of the venues, and um, it, it was, it was, it's as far as like growing the band, not, not too much of that. We learned a lot um, from about like at venues and things like that, about how to like talk to the venues and, and, and really a lot about staying true to yourself as an individual, because and there's a lot of people in the scene, not just in the bands, but that surround the bands that help the bands get to where they're going, the tour managers, the merch guys, the, you know, that kind of thing. So everyone's got their own input. Um, Garrett, Garrett had an experience with, uh, uh, 
from Red Jumpsuit Apparatus um, at one of the venues where he kind of oh, yeah. kind of taught us like um, to really stick up for yourself at some of these venues, you know, and because it, it can get kind of dicey, you know, some people are uh, overstepping and that kind of stuff. So we learned a lot about the touring experience. For us um as far as that goes just interacting um as artists i guess uh which was a different experience for all of us because we had never really done that um at that level so that was definitely definitely super uh super helpful as far as like growing um i, I mean tiktok is huge right now you know everyone's got to get on tiktok that kind of again that's really where, where a lot of the bands are popping off and 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 social media in general you know it's kind of it's still it's still fresh it's, it's still pretty recent that it, that's you know booming so yeah lizzie what is your final question for for Nevelous? Um, other than touring, uh, okay, l let me rewind a little bit. Other than band related stuff, what are some goals you guys might have for this year? Just for yourselves, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Don't everybody. Not, <laughs> not band related. That's where I got you. <laughs> That's um, good. I've, I've always been a little bit heavier, so I would like to maybe lose like 30, 40 pounds just to feel better about myself. Um, so I, I feel like that's always some, a lot of people's new year's resolution is like, yeah, I'm going to lose X amount of pounds this year, but, uh, I've, I've been doing pretty good so far. Um, I have quit all soda. Um, I, I will occasionally like maybe once a week have like a Red Bull. Um, but I'm just pretty much exclusively drinking water and just trying to eat a lot better. So good for you. It's working out so far. Yeah, kind of double down on that too. Uh, I would like to be a lot healthier with my with my choices, and uh, I've I've always been kind of a gym rat, but I've fallen off <laughs> over the last couple of years. You know, COVID really put a damper on everything, so everyone's kind of falling out of that cycle. So it'd be nice for me to get back into that. I think too, as well, as like yeah. a like a personal growth growth goal. Um, one of my goals uh, for this year is to um, be less, um, I guess controlling over my life basically like I, I like i just want to kind of just let go easier i guess you know just not let the little things affect me as much um yeah. and also i want to look into maybe starting up uh, like my own business of some sort nice. Nice. i have no idea what that is but <laughs> <laughs> it'll come to you selling coffee <laughs> mugs <laughs> yeah there you go. i think to touch on a little Potter. bit of what everyone said else said <laughs> He has, he has an inventory already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think to touch a little on what everyone else said. Um, yeah, I kind of want to like let go a little bit, like Kyle was saying, like not really stress about the future and kind of live more in the present, um, and just you know focus really on myself. Um, maybe just be a little healthier, like physically, mentally. Um, you know, I I could probably speak for a lot of people. I struggle with like anxiety. And I just get like easily stressed out, and I really just don't want that to be like a crutch. I just want to start like loving the things I'm doing and just live every day as it comes. And like just not that. worry about a like whole that. lot anymore. Like you know? It's a good answer. Yeah, for sure. Garrett, you got anything to add? Um, no, I don't. I don't really have like a specific goal that I had previously set for myself, but like I want to be healthier and. Um, Get them just just pack on the gains, I guess. You want to get small, though? <laughs> Garrett's going to start doing trend actually. We just decided. Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> school. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I have one one final question uh, for everybody. It is kind of a serious one. Uh, let's say, let's say uh, a smaller local band is watching right now, someone that just started a band maybe a couple of months ago, and they want to get to where you're at what would you suggest that they do or, or how would they go about it to, to achieve the success that you guys have? Uh, and I know, I know it's complicated cause not everybody's DIY. It's a lot easier just to pay a producer to, you know, bust out the heat, but that stuff's like a couple of grand a single sometimes. Uh, what would you suggest a starting up band focus on as their first like primary target? Well, you've got uh, some words of wisdom. <laughs> I got, I got a couple. Of... I would say songwriting. Yeah, I think, I think songwriting for sure is is a good step. I guess well, I'll, I'll kind of tee it off. I think being in being individualism 
you know, uh, it's hard. It's easy in this day and age where, you know, on TikTok, the trend is to do what everyone else is doing, and that gets exposure. And I think that not necessarily going against the grain, but going with the grain in your own way, you know, um, adding a new color to the rainbow kind of thing. Uh, you don't have to be entirely brand new, but do it how you want to do it. Do how you like to do it and just do it over and over and over again and love that growth and exposure and that change over time. That's the most important thing because uh, being uh, being an artist, anyone can be a musician. It's, it takes a lot it takes a lot of time to be like an artist, be something you set you can set yourself, you know, uh, away from the crowd and and become your own person. And I feel like that that's what people like because people like hearing something they have never heard before but didn't know that they liked until then. Like Sleep Token, you know, Sleep Token is popping up right now and they're a different sound, but they've got some, you know, influence. So so really individualism and 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 perfecting your craft of course but you know finding finding your finding your lane you know which is 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 super important you guys want to add to that um yeah i think uh i think something that's really important is to just be realistic about like the sound you're producing um you know be honest with yourself if something maybe doesn't sound as good as it could uh work on it like take it back revamp it a little bit um Another thing I think is really important is to uh, block out all the noise uh, with social media and everything. And everyone and their brother is in a band, and everyone's got a different formula. Um, and it's so hard to be positive about, about things if you're constantly looking at social media. It is really important, but at the same time, it's also like keep your head down, you know, keep grinding, keep doing your thing, you know, um, stay true to your thing. Because if you keep looking at what social media is doing, it's just gonna like eat you up inside, and that's you know that's one of those things that like you know going back to what you want to work on a personal goal is just you know don't, don't don't let the noise of social media you know influence you in a bad way. Awesome. I would I would say like use use everything around you as inspiration, not as like a way to compare yourself, you know, like you can't compare apples to bananas to oranges. Like everyone likes a different kind of fruit, you know? So like just kind of do you do your thing. Um, I like the phrasing that was used earlier. Add another color to the rainbow. I've never heard that term before. I I don't know. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta patent that one. You gotta patent that one right there. (laughs) That's clever. uh, it's it like to add on just to tack on something at the end of the social media thing it's really we live in a world of instant gratification nowadays Mm -hmm. and in in this industry it's really important to not seek that it's it feels good it feels great you know when something when something gets some views and you have people telling you oh this is we really enjoy this and that's so awesome but just stay humble stay stay like Corey said stay honest about you know your production can't if when you think things are great try to make them better i guess you know um here kyle Kyle, kyle's got something too (laughs) yeah so to add to what everybody else has said um the music that that you write is it's it's your voice you know so it's it's from your heart so don't let anybody else's opinions deter from that you know because that's that's you that's who you are so um you know and not everybody's gonna like what you put out and that's okay you know that there's an audience for everybody um you'll find your audience and um you know it might take some time but there are people out there that will that will really like your music even if other people don't and that's fine so don't let don't let the haters hate all fantastic (laughs) advice if you're if you're watching please support nebulous hit the follow button on spotify check out affliction it's fantastic i've uh, i'm glad i was able to stump you one time out of the two times, get some hot sauce I'm going. I'm actually glad you did too. That's good. Hell Locking yeah. Down a peg. He's going to yeah. go watch all of The Office six times in a row right now after this is over. I will <laughs> never, never stop me again. Uh, you guys were awesome. I appreciate it so much. Have a, have an excellent day. Next time you come to Southern California, please let us know so we can do our best to bring a couple people out there and support. And uh, Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so thank you guys for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you so guys. much for the opportunity. Thank you. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, sorry, please, please go listen to Affliction. Um, we worked really hard on it, so um, yeah, super hard. Yep, it's amazing. <laughs> we are never at all socials, so yeah. thanks again. Thank we also have merch. <laughs> oh, I need that. Buy a shirt. Also have merch and mugs. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> we, yeah, we don't have any mugs. No, don't say that. We don't have, actually, okay. never mind. We do have mugs. We're selling Kyle's. <laughs> That's you. funny. You guys are awesome. <laughs> have a great day. I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, maybe we can check Thanks in again so in like six or seven months and just touch yeah. base and see where you're at. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, nevertheless. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs>